Hello my guys, welcome to the channel today. We're just doing a short video talking about granary because of course we're selling 5v5 um, tomorrow slash today depending when you see this video and just talking about a few small things you can do to help yourself, you know, help yourself out to make the most of what you got because just because you don't have uh, 9, 10, 12, 14, I don't know which number it goes up to, million GP roster, uh, you can still beat people who are bigger than you if you just, you know, do certain things uh, better. The first thing is how you set up your defense. Now, you can do it one of two ways. You can be the casual player or you can be the extremely hardcore try hard player. If you're the casual player, I recommend setting up your defense. You need to set your best single team on defense. Then your next, um, depending on how many teams you go, so I have 11 zones in total. 11, sorry, 11 teams in total to be in the three zones. Um, then I would say the next maybe 12 to 14 teams. Put those on attack and then after that fill backwards after that that's the really simple casual way of doing it how people are used to do it right that you make sure that you win your matches that you attack with at the end of the day grand arena if you have time to play it is much better to be attacking with because you get a hundred or ninety thousand if i think it's nine thousand actually uh credits per win so if you think about it 11 times that's a million almost uh credits for the wins you know, you can always do with credits, right? Likewise, um, honestly, if you're playing casually, um, it's kind of a bit of a jerk move just to set your defense, right, to stop people from playing, because, you know, if you're not going to play properly, why should, you know, stopping them playing just seems a bit unfair. Now, of course, if you're playing hardcore and try hard type, you know, you can go out of your way and look at the opponent using SWGH.GG. I think that was the right address in there somewhere and look at your opponent's roster and look at what he's got and try and work out your counters and work out what he's going to be for your opponent. It only takes you like five, 10 minutes. And the thing is, it especially takes you less time after like a week or two, because once you start to understand what teams kind of what teams, what things actually work, especially for your roster specifically, you don't need to then go up and go, okay, he's sending uh, Ivan Radis on defense. What about me against Ivan Radis? You're going to be like, oh yeah, I can just use Bounty Hunters or I can just use uh, Sith Trio or I can just use a CLS, right? Or a general like a or whatever it is that you'd like to use for Admiral Riders as an example. And once you get that idea of what comes what, that, that's great. And then you kind of fits into the next one, which is you need to, if you, if you actually want to do well in Grand Arena, you just need to know what beats what. You really do. Like, there are certain teams that will be lots of things, you know? It's like, You've got John Lennon Skywalker will be most teams that are not Galactic Legends, you know. You can pick out Kenobi, you know, and he'll be most characters pretty much flat out. Um, trying to understand what beats what, what and try and work out what the low bar is. Like, can you work out two shots to do something which will mean that you can keep something better on defense? Because if you can two shot something, keep something better on defense, it means you'll probably do better overall than if you had the one shot, but you had a weaker defense. It's, it's little characters like, for example, uh, uh, using Maul with uh, Imperial, Super, uh, Imperial Super Commando and Gar Saxon, right? Um, or using uh, Qui-Gon Jinn Omicron with uh, Jedi Master, um, Yoda, using Mace Windu, using Kiari Mundi, and using uh, Jedi Anakin, but like those, those kind of characters there together, for example. Um, understanding the Imperial Troopers, provided you speed up yet massively, can beat almost anybody, including some GLs. But understanding that the Bad Batch haven't got a great role, understanding Dr. Africa, Dr. Africa, understanding the Resistance, and so on and so on and so on. So just understanding your counters is always very important. For ships, I love slightly different things, so I don't know if you can. Yeah, oh, there you go, you can see ships. I've got the fine lines on defense, which is pretty terrible to put on defense, to be honest, but there you go. There aren't many fleets in the game. You get much less chance to work with fleets than you do with ships, uh, with, with characters, right? So the first thing is, you, unless you absolutely need to, only fill two sh two ships, right? You ain't got enough ships, right, to fill uh, full uh, seven ship fleets every single time. And secondly, honestly, if you can't be wise to look at what he got and what he usually sets into fits, most people's ships don't change each week. Most people keep their ships the same, but it's three v three. 5v5, unless they get a brand new ship, they don't change it, right? So actually look and see what the guy did. If he always attacks the Malevolence, the Negotiator, and um, the Profundity, 
then look at what you can do defensively to do that. Or go, okay, if you need to do those feature attack code, that means he always sets the riders uh, home one and uh, the executrix on defense. So we can easily find these counters here, right? Just, just taking a few minutes out of your time to do this will really help a lot. Now, those are just like, to start with very basic things about Grand Arena. There are a couple other things you can do, uh, even today slash tomorrow before today, the whole thing starts. Um, the first is on mods, or the first 10 seconds on mods. Um, the first thing you can do is actually make sure you attach all your mods, right? Now this is actually a really common fault. I have four, I'm in Kyber 2, and I fight at least one person a season who has forgotten to put mods on characters. Don't even put the wrong mods on, just forgotten to put mods flat out, right? And that's terrible because, you know, we could take, uh, let me find a character which is really Grievous with. You know, John Grievous, right? Grievous is a really good character. He's not the best character in the game. He's a really good character, though. Probably take out his health mods or two, you know? Um, if you just go to his kit, right, and you take out one of his health mods by mistake, because you forgot to put it back, you bought it for something else. He's got 151,000 health, right? You take that out, he, you know, he loses 60% health there. 60% health there. If you forget to put something these in, his health drops and drops. And we, as we all know, uh, hopefully, his attacks are based on his total health, right? So if he's got a big health pool and you forget to put the mods on, and it's like, same with Mara Jade, so another good example, right? Mara Jade is a brilliant character. Really, really, really fun to use. Part of the star color team. Part of an imperial team. She's around here somewhere. No, she's there. Say I forgot to put one of her speed mods on. And then my Mario Jade stops being 333 speed and it starts being 313 speed. Well, that really sucks, right? Because if she's 313 speed, then you kind of stuff by that point because you're sending your cameras that you have before don't work properly because you've got them. So make sure you actually set the mods. If you don't set the mods, you're just asking for trouble. The other thing you can do with mods, of course, and I've, I've mentioned this before in the video about ships, I should put it back this way is if you look for any characters that are pilots, right? Even if you don't use the character in a team thing, so I don't use Second Sister, right? Because Second Sister is the odd lady out for my Inquisitor team of five, right? Grand Inquisitor and the other four don't have Reva yet. Second Sister is left out. Mm. Provided you use a character for a ship, like this is the, um, the Thai uh, Interceptor, Make sure that you put as good mods as possible on. They don't have to be matching, they don't have to be aligned mods, so I can put like whatever mods on here. I just put them on good because I use her occasionally for some like unaligned force user team. Um, but make sure you've got the best mods on possible because the higher the mod, you get added extra one or two speed to your ship. And that makes a difference in those ship battles when you've got those really tight windows of making victories, you know, making sure that you've got uh, your uh, Galactic Republic ships you've got. The right, uh, see Rex. Said, that's terrible, right? I really need to do better with Rex. I was hoping for a better example than that. You, you get the point, though. Hopefully, my Anakin is, yeah, my Anakin is better, right? So, for example, Anakin is faster because he's got all these mods attached to him. They are all the six E mods, um, and it wouldn't even matter if they were the best mods, the right mods, or anything like that. So long as he's got that level mods, that'll all that'll actually make the big difference. So. Make sure you got your mods on. Make sure you got good mods on the right people uh, if you can. The last thing I should say for would be about Grand Arena, especially if you're brand new to Grand Arena and doing it, is try and have fun, right? Because it's really easy, and I get this just like anybody else, it's really easy to get sucked into it and be like super competitive and be like, I really want to win, yada, 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 yada. I'm so unhappy because I lost. And I get, I get that like occasionally, you know, it's, it's hard not to because we're human, right? We get involved in these things. But honestly, if you get 200, I get 240 crystals per day anyway, just for turning up and doing the fights. I get another um, 200 crystals for losing the match if I lose much. If I win one out of the, out of the week or win two out of the week, you know, I suddenly make uh, like 2,000 extra crystals, right? If I, if I make a victory, oh, we win easily, whatever it is, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter if you win by one point, or by a thousand points, you know, it's still a victory. Um, so try and take it in a slightly calm and relaxed way. Try not to get too over stuff about it. 
Um, and then one, one very last thing that now I think about it, so there we go, I, you know, we fake out there with the ending. If you struggle with Grand Arena, and if you um, don't know what to do exactly, and you're kind of getting kicked a lot, you feel like you are, try and wait until the last possible chance before you're doing your clear. Why do you do that? Because I found, so I normally stream at 9pm Eastern, so I don't really have the advantage of watch mine. But a couple of times when I've been busy on the evenings, I've not been able to stream. I leave it until like an hour, an hour and a half before the end of the um, Grand Arena. And the other guy might have attacked by that. Or he might not have done. It doesn't really matter. But if he has attacked, you didn't know what you're aiming for. So as a person who's brand new to Grand Arena, you're like, okay, this is what I'm looking for. This is a bit easier. If we're looking for, um, you know, if we're looking for, if they've not attacked you, you've not attacked yet, if you just start just at the right um, time, you can hopefully put pressure on him to stop you from actually doing well. So you can actually just kind of force that. I mean, I've done that before where, you know, with 45 minutes to go, he's not attacked, you're not attacked, then he does one. But then if you do three matches, you just try to pop any pressure, it's a little bit like hit, like hit and miss like this, like just jumping ahead of him. So can kind of negotiate your way through um, that. Now there are many videos out there for people like Zareth um, or, or Arnold who list off uh, the best teams to use uh, for Grand Arena, uh, the best Omicrons to have, the best Zetas to have, the best ones to have. Um, so I don't really need to go into all of that. Um, I would of course highly recommend um, having things like the Survivor Press Omicron, the Wampa Omicron, the uh, Key, the uh, Quagrant Tin Omicron. Uh, if you've got Darth Malaga, Darth Malaga's Omicron, that kind of thing. Um, but honestly, there are plenty of other people out there who talk about those things. So I would just reinforce firstly, set your defense based on attacking. If you want, if you're always a good time, make sure that you actually have enough stuff to win the fights, right? What you don't want to do is attack but get screwed over, and then he has to do just the minimum work to beat you. That's the first thing. Second thing, make sure you have the time, if you have the time, look at what he says normally for defense, look at what he's got, and try and adapt according to that. It's a little painful initially because you don't know what counts what, but eventually you'll understand that Dr. Afra can be Jabba the Hutt on a good day, or you'll understand that Starkiller can be Ray, or you'll understand that um, the best way to beat General Skywalker, if you really have all the best stuff, is maybe kind of Luke Skywalker, which is a pain in the butt. But if you have it leveled and you, you, you know, you're set up for it, you can do really well. Um, try and think of it like, like a chess match, right, if you will, um, when it comes to these things. Do the same with ships, right? Think about what he's going to set. Look at his account. What has he got? What is he going to do? Think through what you can is going to be in the worst case scenario, because invariably the worst case happens every time. Make sure you've got your mods on. Make sure you put your mods on ship characters in particular, even if they're not high level characters, because those characters are super important. Try and attack as late as possible if you don't know what you're doing, or if you know you're outgunned, because that's the best way to sneak victories in an outgunned situation. And then last, but by no means least, try and have fun, because you're going to get crystals no matter what. If you get several hundred to a thousand crystals over the course of a couple of weeks, that is a godsend, right? Early on in your grind arena slash account career, uh, as you try to get towards any characters that you're aiming for. There you go. Hopefully, you guys uh, find a little bit of this helpful. I will see you all next time.